Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast Blah Blah Land. Uh, bring on the blah is how I like to phrase it to people, but Blah Blah Land is the actual name of the show. Uh, so welcome along, this is actually episode 3 I do believe. Um, it's 2020, new year, um, starting to kickstart it. I had two great shows before with two Annas, with Anna Davis and, and Anna Johnston. Um, singularly, not at the same time. Uh, they were both fun. They were both invigorating with happiness. Um, and the feedback I got from a lot of people online was, was that they really enjoyed it. So it's really good that people out there are listening and actually enjoying the show. So today, it's kicking off the 2020 sort of version of Blah Blah Land. Uh, bringing the blah today is Jenny Lawson from Mimosa Beauty. Uh, she runs a beauty salon in Chelmsford. Now, she's not just your run of the mill beauty salon, makeup lady, waxer. She has created this brand, and we go into it in the podcast where we talk about what she did and what led to that. And her brand is all eco innovation, it's all about nurturing the planet, it's all about re- no, sustainability, um, which is a really interesting sort of way of going about things and I tell you what she's pretty inspiring so when I sat down and spoke to her I was just if you when you listen to this I don't really say much just let her go I let her talk and it was it was really really enjoyable for me definitely something I took a lot out of this personally this this chat with Jenny um, I sat there I just I was kind of almost I want to say almost in awe of everything she was saying she's very passionate she's very true she's very raw she's very real um, and I really enjoyed that so hopefully when you listen to this you will feel the same and um, you can check out all of her stuff all online at mimosabeauty.co.uk and um, yeah so thanks for listening everybody we're going to go straight into the chat and I will see you next time don't forget all over the social medias on Instagram at bring out the blah but bring on the blah I can't even get it right and Twitter at bring on the blah and facebook.com forward slash Bring on, but you know where to find us if you're listening, and that is everywhere, whatever. So, if you can hear anyone snoring in the background, it's just my dog. Enjoy the show. Doing, Jenny, you right? Yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, very nice to be invited, so thank you very much. Well, thanks for inviting me yeah, to your lovely, this lovely salon. a little bit messy, but... Oh. This is a messy salon, is it? Yeah. No, it's not. It's, um, this is my room. It's busy. So what, what, so what goes on in this room? So I'm a skin specialist, so this is why there's more trolleys and stuff in here, because I do uh, microneedling, hmm. microdermabrasion, which is the big kit over there. And then where I focus very much on education, I have uh, the charts up on the walls that other people don't have in their rooms. Oh, okay. So my room is much more of an educational room um, and also electrolysis. So I do individual hair removal. So I yeah. specialise in transgender, so beard oh, removal. Okay. okay, that's good. Um, yeah, that's kind of well, my actual job. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so I'm waxing. So that's this room's very much kind of waxing, electrolysis, and skin. It's so a lot to do with hair and skin. Yeah. Hair. What, what, got you, what got you into that? Uh, oh God. Very broad question. That is a really broad question. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, it's it's funny because I think now that I'm a business owner, so many people talk to me about business. Yeah. They don't talk to me about my job. Yeah. Um, and I came into the industry because I'm severely dyslexic okay so so severely so struggled at school struggled doing exams um but when I then I wanted to do medicine Hmm. I wanted to do science yeah and then when one of my best friends when I was at secondary school went off instead of doing a level she went to do beauty Hmm. at Braintree and she was studying everything that I was studying at a-level biology. Yeah. All about enzymes and proteins and body formulations and all those kind of things. And so I decided that actually I'd look into that a little bit more. And that was when I kind of came across the fact that if I did an international qualification, which I have, which is Sedesco, 
then I would have basically the same anatomy and physiology as a nurse before it went into a degree level nursing, um, which would mean I'd have the body anatomy knowledge and the skin knowledge and the science knowledge um, and I could help more people on a continuous level rather than it being a one hit you come to A&E because you've got a problem or nursing on that aspect it meant that I could actually treat people holistically not from a woo woo energy level which does come into this very much into the industry um but from more of a actually let's look at the whole thing let's look at how much water you're drinking on a daily basis let's look at your stress factors at home let's look at your ovulation cycle because that's going to impact how your skin responds and then what we can use during those time periods so I think it's it's very much an overall I found that I could use my brain in a way that worked really well and succeed extraordinarily at it. Um, I passed all of my exams with, with honours. I think I was about 2% off the well top done. grades. So, um, yeah, when you find the thing that you want to do, and especially then the way that beauty worked in that respect was it was multiple choice. Mm. So I did a seven and a half hour practical exam to qualify. So I had to know everything. You're not, you. it's not like the way... MVQs work where you do module by module by module you learn all of it and then you get tested by an international examiner who's flown over to examine you so it's um yeah I think a lot of people (laughs) underestimate um how far you can go with with beauty yeah I mean obviously with beauty I think people put a lot of um a lot of trust into what they're paying for and what they're putting forward because yeah. you've got to look after someone's skin. You've yeah, got to you look do. after someone's face and, and when waxing, you've got to make sure you do it. Yeah. Probably you don't want to go there and pay to get hurt. No, exactly. So if you people have the faith that you've done everything correctly and you, you're good at what you do. Yeah. And you've got obviously, I can see up there everything about the skin. Oh, they're just charts. All it's these just skin an charts. And and yeah, I mean, and skin cancer because actually for therapists, it's... Um, we see parts of people's bodies that they don't really look at. Yeah, no, so we see true. their backs yeah. and we see the back of their legs mm. and we see areas regularly. So where if someone's coming for waxing, we see them every four to six weeks. Mm. Yeah. We're seeing if things change. And the rule that I was always taught was if you see something and you look away and you look back and you're like, oh, that's when you want to flag it. because yeah, yeah. And you take photos of it and iPhone quality is so good now mm. that you can see margins of of areas of moles and I, I've sent a lot of people off to go and get stuff looked at and there have been people that have come back being like oh yeah no it was fine I'm like I'd prefer to be wrong exactly yeah. 150,000 times than I would that one time I I yeah. overestimate myself oh definitely and I'm wrong yeah because I'd prefer you went and got stuff dealt with by someone from like a plastic surgeon then I would yeah. be like oh no it's absolutely fine just leave it yeah, come yeah. back six months later oh Jen actually that thing on my leg it was skin cancer well, exactly. yeah. uh, it's now spread all over my body like oh great yeah. so that's the kind of thing that I try and teach as well so the thing that we look for is the things that that's just the right thing to do though isn't it well really? yeah <laughs> but <laughs> it's but it's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people take for granted yeah. um we live in a country where our sun creams aren't no. aren't graded so we've got all the five star ratings but they're not scientifically mm. yeah we're, we're, we're rubbish in this yeah. country for when it comes to because sun. we take it for granted yeah. because we're in the uk and we don't get that hot yeah. um like in the in the summers when we get like the first oh the degrees. minute the minute it's warm yeah. tops are off That's everybody's no out <laughs> no but then you sit there and go i don't matter I'll, just, I'll be fine you're like but you wouldn't do this in spain you're no like, yeah, but that spain it's yeah, a different kind no. of sun it's, not, it's the same sun. It's the same sun. <laughs> same <laughs> sun all around the world, a bit like the moon. It's all um, there, yeah. Yeah, so no, so that's kind of, that's how I got into it, really. Um, and I worked for five years, five and a half years. Mm. Um, maybe five. Before owning Mimosa. Yeah. Um, because I wanted to get industry experience. I wanted to work in... Which is exactly what I did. I went. I wanted to work in a big spa. Um, I then wanted to work in a small salon to see how complete independence ran. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted corporate experience. So I went and worked for Virgin. Oh, okay. Um, over in Thundersley in one of the gyms. Um, which taught me about brand 
ma- massively about brand, kind of all the things that you need to learn when you're dealing with a big corporate as to how how it's seen. Yeah. Um, brand standards, all these things that, like, when you're an employee, you kind of like, oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's got to be aerial text, and it's got to be size twelve, and it's got to be this, and you've got to know this. And actually, then when you start doing it for yourself, yeah, you've already got a whole toolkit of everything that you already know that you didn't even realize that you knew. Um, there are times I wish I could go back and be like, I wish that that seventeen year old had just remembered something (laughs) because you're just in it and you're not and it's also it's hard managing staff as well because I've been there I've been at the very bottom I've been the girl that's got no experience Mm -hmm. I've been thrown into a spa of a team of 80 people so you can go and hide yeah you can you can hide off in and if you haven't got anyone in you can go off and hide but then I know that that's what they do so it's 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 really difficult because you've got to yeah. yeah this when when you i guess it's like people having children and teenagers when they try and sneak out the house you know and you're yeah. like i can hear you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or when they just lie to you you, know, like, you just think i either this is the most incredible training for children or <laughs> god it's yeah which isn't meant in any way it's just no, it's yeah. just patience it and is. tolerance and yeah, I, mean, I didn't think I'd have to become that adult. Yeah, but I you mean, do. you've done really well to sort of get where you are with this brand. Thank you. And I see it all over the social medias and that, so that's obviously how I sort of saw it, being in Chelmsford as well. And over the time, I just I've watched it kind of grow myself. I thought, like, wow, you. this is you've done really well. This is like every time I see it, it pops up, but it does stand out, and that's the good, like you were saying about branding. Yeah, you're very, you've looked into it. You know, sort of what you need to do. Um, but obviously, we know, and you know, that one of the big things that you did is like you just decided not to be like every beauty salon out there or um, anything like that, where you with the eco innovation. Yeah, so that uh, that only started in this building. Yeah. Um, because I was I worked on my own for five five years. Hmm. Yeah, I opened on the twenty eighth of. 28th of January 2012, which is Australia Day. Um, Very poignant right now. Mm. Um, And then we opened here on the 26th of March 2017. Okay. So I was on my own for five years, which is where I kind of, that's where I won my awards Mm -hmm. um, for Small Salon 2014 and 2016. 16, I was also nominated for Outstanding Contribution to the Industry with all my transgender work. Mm. Um, and I, and I was up for specialist therapist as well. Um, and then because I was booked about four months ahead, so you couldn't get an appointment for four months. Like it was, it was, it was to the point of, of silly. Yeah. And if you wanted an evening appointment, it was six months. Like people had booked their appointments for, I've got it now. I've got people who have booked it up until the end of the year this year. Because they want half past seven on a Wednesday yeah, on the second Wednesday of every month. Yeah. And they want yeah. and they'd prefer to have it in and move it four months in advance and yeah, they yeah. would to and um yeah, I'm really blessed and I'm really grateful for it. Um it does make going away or having yeah. a life quite difficult. You've got to find that balance, yeah. Yeah, which isn't easy. Um not when you're trying to keep a building like this going. Um and so when I then, I joined a mastermind in 2016. Um, I'd been on, I'd been doing other stuff during 2015. And then 2016, I think it was 2016, was when I really kind of committed to business growth. Yeah. Um, and it was on the first trip of that, that I decided that, that I, we were doing kind of purpose and where do you feel that you want to be? Where Where's your legacy? What do you want to be doing? How do you want to be helping people other than just yourself? Yeah. Um, and that is where it kind of, it was very much because I'm a scuba diver. It was what happens if we could have a clean planet? And it was like, it was it's such a big thing. And it's the kind of thing that you come home from a trip like that and everyone thinks you're completely delusional and you've been like drugged by a cult. Um, which it very much was, I think. Um, and it was actually, no, what if I can make an impact? And what happens if I can help towards a clean planet? How how do we do that? Um, and if we're going to expand the company, 
the line should be clean. So um, that took, God. well, we got the, we put in planning in the September because we had to change, it's all very techy. We had to yeah, change yeah. the the use and we had a war and it was all. I bet, I bet it was. The joy of being on New London Road in the centre yeah. of Chelmsford in an old Victorian house. Um, we didn't have to worry about planning in terms of what we did to, because it was all internal. Yeah. So that was all fine. It was more just the planning use. Um, and then we just kind of, I invested a lot of personal money. It was my own inheritance oh, well, that okay. I invested in to the building. Yeah. Um, so we kind of did everything we could. Uh, we've got triple glazing on the windows. So that's why you can't hear the road in here. That's good. Uh, yeah. It's completely, like, that's New London that's, Road. It's, that's, it's heaving. That's busy. Oh, you yeah. live around, around the corner. Yeah, so, so it's, it's really right. loud and you can't hear anything. Um, the laminate floorings, eco, the coconut matting as you walk in, that, like, hessian, that's yeah. coconut. Okay. Um, the wall, the paint on the walls, all eco, colour matched. So mm-hmm. it it is flower on ball, but it's colour matched into yeah. an eco... Although Flower and Ball is when you're dealing with a three-story building, you just can't, you can't paint an entire building <laughs> in a brand. <laughs> yeah. It's physically impossible. It's the cost of fortune. Um, we run on aircon units rather than electricity, uh, rather than gas. Yeah. So all of the rads are turned off. We don't have any gas. I think our gas bills are about £4.20. Wow. Okay. Um, our electricity, I think, over the winter goes up to about £200 a month. Oh, right. But... We're running yeah. Well, like yeah. an entire building. Um, we have got five rooms in here, but we only really use three. Oh, okay. So we're not fully staffed and we're not fully utilised within the building, um, which is difficult when it comes to award applications because they yeah. see you as a five treatment room building. It's like, no, I've got two full-time members of staff yeah. and two part-time members of staff. That's we're it. not in the same league as people that have got 15 full-time mm. members of staff. Or It's just, yeah, it's madness. Um, but that's just technicalities. Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, but no, we've, so basically everything we did was clean. That was the line. That's it's really commendable it's, that um, you went with it as well and didn't, didn't do it without the, making other sounds like cynical about it, but you didn't do it just, no, just for a trend. No, like not a lot of people at all. Can do, no. Which is what I find the struggles when I do see people doing it stuff as a trend you're like you don't really care no you're and, doing and the like bare minimum no like the the bit that i've struggled with speaking hmm. is i think people expect there to be a cheap quick fix yes and there is not a cheap quick fix when it comes to sustainability yeah how can i how can i tick a box you can't yeah. and you can in terms of 100 percent landfill free recycling mm-hmm. And you've got to do the research yeah like i've stood on stage and people gone well her, like yeah but that's just for essex i'm like it takes a Google. Like, come on, guys. We've got an entire database are plugged into the sky um, that's burning our planet that is, it has all the information you could possibly want. It's not like you're in Harry Potter and you've got to trace through a library yeah. to try and find this information. Um, it's, it's that kind of thing. It, it does cost money, mm. but it's £86. Pounds. Yeah. Like, how much do people spend on takeaways over the month or their coffees or yeah. all these kind of things that actually, if you just reinvest your money and put it in a different avenue, you can make a huge difference, a completely huge difference. Mm. Um, the carpet's 86 Like, it, And the thing, the problem was, it costs more money. Yeah. Because it's sustainably sourced, it costs more money. Yeah, of course it is. So... Yeah. It's and the carpet is eighty six percent recycled. I didn't want a carpet that was dark. I wanted one that was light because it looks beautiful. Yes, it gets muddy all the time. So we pay <laughs> someone to come in and clean it because it doesn't matter how hard we do it yep. and how many steam mops I've bought, it doesn't work. So you've got to get you've got to and you've just got to invest in it if you want to keep it beautiful and you want to in, nourish the building that you've that you've built. Then yeah. it's for me that's that's the hardest thing and it's also distinguishing between recyclability reuse and longevity okay so making sure that yeah okay our wax oil bottles are plastic you can't get away from plastic if you drop something that is glass it's going to smash and you're going to waste product Mm. what's worse wasting 40 50 quids worth of someone actually making the stuff or having it in a plastic bottle yeah that 
if you refill and reuse, it's, then, deli- it's limited. Yeah, we and we can't get away from plastic. It's this incredible thing that we've created that we also need to respect. It's a bit like when you listen to people about artificial intelligence. Mm. If we don't want to be destroyed by what we're creating, we've got to respect ourselves and how we're working yeah. to teach this intelligence mm. how we would like to be treated in return. It's, it was on Elizabeth Day, Mo, somebody's podcast. It was incredible. It's an incredible yeah. podcast. It was just like you listen to it and you think, bloody oh, how, hell. How, how to fail. Yeah. yeah. I listened to that. It's a really good podcast. Yeah. Mo, Mo, somebody, the guy that did the happiness algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really insane, kind of just mind blowing. <laughs> I think I listened to it about four times actually just to try and get my head around the whole concept because it is true. Yeah. That if we don't start respecting what we're doing, then we're going to we're going to have real problems. Um, and it's a bit like when people talk to me about towels, mm. it's like, well, yeah, we wash our towels at 90 degrees, but I've had the same towels for three and a half years. So what's worse, washing them at a higher degree, making sure they're clean and hygiene standards yeah. are met mm-hmm. and not sending them to a laundrette that's going to potentially be using chemicals mm-hmm. or replacing our towels every six months and putting that amount of fabric into recycling yeah. because they're covered in oil. So it's it and it's it's awful to say it's a tip for tat, but it very much is you need to pick your channel. Yeah. I and totally pick that. pick the the fight that you want to fight hmm. so that you can kind of work to the best of your ability. Do you have a lot of pushback from people? No. But no, no, no but then I would also say no one really knows. Oh, okay. So that's also something that came up when I did a talk recently was that people push their eco. Yeah. Whereas I don't. See, that, see, that's what I was trying to say earlier about some people push their eco to the point where they become eco warriors. And it's like, and then you can't, it's like in life, anything you're passionate about, you have to find that balance of understanding what the other can see, what you can see. You can see one thing. Yeah. But you want to see what the others can see. So when you're passionate about anything, it's, it could be like football, like a football fan loves football, so passionate about it. But when they're talking to somebody that really doesn't care about football... Yeah, they don't know anything. They have to understand, oh, okay, yeah. it's not that they don't like you, they just don't like that. Yeah. So you kind of find that balance. Um, I find with the, with the eco side of it, I've... Um, in my 20s, no, I couldn't care less because I was that sort of person. But over the time, over the years, I've kind of learned to... No, I do need to change. I need to set an example. Small little changes here can set me yeah. up. And sort of lead by example. I mean, I work, work for a company that have gone plastic free. So and that's a big company. So they've gone plastic free. So I started to go plastic free at home. So try not to get plastics, uh, single use plastics for definite. So start. But it's there. hard. It it's hard. hard. It's, it's li- really it's, hard with veg- like with vegetables and all exactly. those kind of things. Like I had the MP come in here because my grandma had given her one of our e- eco books and we are completely zero tolerance in terms of politics in here at all it's zero tolerance um and she came in and had this chat and she's like what's the one thing that we could do to for the industry i'm like it's not the industry i said you need to remove all plastic packaging around fruit mm. and veg that does not need it like carrots and avocados yeah and parsnips and butternut squash and everything that doesn't need plastic and she's like oh no but that's down to the supermarket's responsibility <laughs> i'm like no it's not that's a government thing yeah. um but it's also <laughs> it, well, it's ridiculous isn't it you've got to but then i also don't believe that personally which is i might be completely wrong and i'm very happy to be proven wrong um, that I don't believe our councils are recycling the way they should. Because if they were, we wouldn't have landfill. It's true, yeah. It's, Do you it's, think that it's, it's lack of education or lack of care? I think that, I think that's what comes out. I think I... I don't know. I give people benefit of the doubt. I'm very kind of like... I always give people benefit of the doubt. So I never think people are doing the wrong thing just for the sake of doing it. I always feel like people are doing the wrong thing through lack of education. Or lack of knowledge. Like you say, people, oh, I don't know. It's like, if you don't know something, look it up. Yeah. Try and teach yourself something. So when it comes to like the whole like it's landfill and not recycling properly, it's because someone's not been told how to do it properly. Or they're hiring certain people that are not really understanding or don't care. They just want to earn a wage and go home. So they're not doing their job properly. 
Yeah, but I th- I think the I think the education piece is a huge one hmm. um, because also people don't know that you need to take the paper off your baked bean can for it to be recycled. Yeah, you see, I, I didn't know that. Really, my, my wife told me that she's like, "Yeah, oh, this is what you need to do." Yeah, like, oh, like okay. people don't know that. And whereas I cheat, hmm. I classify what I'm doing as completely cheating right. because I pay a company to do it. Yeah. And I, I am guaranteed they're 100% <laughs> landfill free. I get stats and figures and yeah, all the yeah, paperwork yeah. and everything else. And I bring my own personal rubbish here. Yeah, so I bring all my stuff at home in here. Sometimes I forget that I've put it in the boot, which is really awful. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. Is your car was, outside? I wonder what that smell uh, was. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> I said to my other I was like, the car smells funny. <laughs> 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 oh, God. And he said something. He was like... I don't know, maybe, maybe something's under the seat or something. He was like, oh, I'll clean it out at the weekend. I was like, oh, okay. And I went food shopping and I opened the boots, put the food in. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the car smells. Because there are two bin bags in the, the back pe- of the car. People walking past your car oh, and they're smelling God. like, oh, what's oh going I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, oh, what an idiot, Jen. But it's, at least I was trying. So, no, it, that's um, it. yeah, I think, I think Inco is a big, big thing. I think. I think it also depends. You get a lot of, and I think eco warrior is such a is such a big term. Mm. <laughs> but also, I'm not vegan. Okay, I'm not vegan. I'm not veggie, um, which is also very difficult because at the minute you start flagging that you're eco, is the minute you start. Yeah, I don't really want to say the word attracting. You start encouraging bad as well. Um, <laughs> Opening your company up to criticism of people who it's, are who have c- different beliefs different and their but their yeah, yeah their belief systems and I am not anti anybody because people are people and their belief system Definitely. is their own. However, I'm not that way inclined, and um, so that's also very difficult because what I don't want to do is come up, which I have come up in a battle situation where it's like, well, why are you not? And I'm like, well, because that's not, I don't eat white carbohydrate. That's not because Mm. of my body image. It's because I've had back surgery. And so white carbohydrates is a massive inflammatory issue for me. So actually if I cut out white pasta, white rice, white potato, Mm. I'm not really left with very much. (laughs) Um, So unless I'm going to live off sweet potato and green beans for the rest of my life. Some people love um, that, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's very difficult. So it's it's also just how, yeah, it's it's very hard because ecos come with so many other connotations rather than it just being, let's look after the planet a little bit more. A bit like going traveling Mm. and being on airplanes and you enter into a whole battlefield that's like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa." Okay, let's just... Uh, here's my eighty yeah. percent goodness that I've done. Uh, yeah, I, I think we, yeah we we live in a world where we are very hypocritical to ourselves. Yeah, but it's not we're not doing it in a nasty sense. We're not doing it in a horrible. It's, we're trying to live our life as yeah. we can, but we're trying to do the best. Like just knowing certain things that you shouldn't do or things that you can put back into the earth. Just do it to make it better. Why not? Let's do it. It is heartbreaking. Like as a scuba diver, being in the Maldives, mm. it's. I went back last December, and there are plastic bottles floating everywhere, and every boat that's got people on it. Like they're doing so much good mm. that they can, especially the divers, because the yeah. divers are the more conservative because we see what's happening underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's one dive site that I've dived for years, um, and I went on. It was oh, it was awful, and the reef. The the guide said it died within six weeks. That's shocking. Um, every meter, yeah, like every week, it was got dying. It was just dying. There's algae. No one knows what it is or how it's happening. Mm. It's just heating up and everything's dying. It's getting covered in this almost moss that almost lives like what lives on our roofs, and yeah. it's shocking. It's and it's it's heartbreaking. Like I learned to dive there as at the age of ten mm. in this incredible ocean that is now a grave it's 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 appalling and it's it's how do we how do we go back and i don't think we can go back i think we just have to work out how to stop it progressing yeah how to how to kind of help it so what's learned from the mistakes yeah and and a bit like what with what's happening at the moment listen to the people that were there before Hmm. listen to the aborigines listen to 
the elders of people who have been in these places for years and have managed to nurture our planet and yet we've just yeah we're destroying it so it's and i think that's where age i think does come into it when you start looking at you listen to the older people you start going back to more eastern rather than western we start needing to focus more focus our energies more looking at how to preserve rather than yeah Rather than kind of, sorry, it's got really depressing, really, hasn't it? No, no. Um, <laughs> but it is like we just we uh, yeah okay. Everyone who's really young and campaigning and activist, I get it, I, I get it. Mm. But spraying a building in fake blood isn't going to help. Yeah, let's do something. Do do something like, productive. Do yeah, something that's gonna go and plant a couple of trees. Yeah. Don't fight in London and cause a whole load of pollution. Exactly. That is making cars stand still for five and a half hours. Mm. Like. Think yeah, every yeah. every <laughs> every action has a uh, opposite and negative reaction. Everything has a reaction to what you do. It's a mm. domino effect. You make one move and another chess piece has to move at the same yeah. time. Yeah. You can't do something and expect there to be no consequence mm. in everything that we do. So um, I decided I wanted to expand. I hadn't really taken into the concept of expanding to the level that I had. It's you just started the ball, it started Yeah, rolling, and, and it starts rolling, and all of a sudden you're halfway down the hill, yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh my God, i like <laughs> got momentum now, and I've yeah. kind of got to really work out how to stop, because at the bottom of this hill is a massive wall, <laughs> yeah. and you don't really think about it until you get to the top of the hill, you're like, oh, awesome, and then you start rolling, you're like, okay, you know, I've just yeah. lost my footing just a little bit, and it just it just goes, and... It's so hard. Hmm. Um, but then that's, for me, that's where self-care comes in. It's where gratitude comes in. It's where self-preservation almost yeah. comes in. That working out. Like, it's God. That I think it's really hard when I hear people, and it's something I'm working on very much personally, when I hear people be like, oh, my God, your company's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, but it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Hard work like, off. But it's it's like it's every day. Mm. Like it's not even and and yes, I know that you get the people that say, Oh yeah, but you know, if you think five positive thoughts and if you only think positively and I'm like, if you only think positively, when that boulder hits you, it's gonna really hurt. Yeah, yeah. And and when stuff does happen, like I lost a member of my family last year. So this new year was really hard mm. because I'm like, she will have died last year yeah not this year and it's like oh my god you're moving further in time away from something that was so hard mm. that you think i should i be over it? not over it because obviously you're yeah, never yeah, going to yeah. get over someone dying but it's we, we, we always put an end date on things when yeah when and you and you can't the grief you can't and that that was something that was really interesting for me because I do all this journaling and I do everything for personal development. And so looking at why I was so upset on New Year's Eve, I'm in, Pro I'm in a beautiful country mm. and I'm sitting there in tears being like, I really don't want 2020. Yeah, that's self-guilt. Yeah. And that's, I've got a partner who's extremely supportive and we sat there and we did gratitude for the whole, mm. what, what are the positive things that happened in 2019 rather than, well, Emily died in April, so then May was crap because of yeah. this. And like when I'm looking at award applications at the moment, and it's like, well, what personal development have you done over 2019? I'm like, absolutely sod all, <laughs> because we were just trying to survive. Yeah. Um, my t like second in command in here, Laura lost her granddad, who was basically a father figure, mm. um, in May. So Emily died in April. Laura had that happen in May, and basically we just couldn't. We broke. Yeah. The whole internals of this building. Because you're human. Yeah. And, and we're the only full-time people in here. Yeah. And when we're not okay, the whole thing hmm. collapses. And we just, have to, we just have to stand and keep going. So you can't even think about learning anything else when you're trying to no. combat your own, your own mind, really. Um, which, again, is where the sanctuary came from. So that's... It's all been... All sorts of roles in yeah, and very much. I think uh, I think everyone I spoke to last year had a crap year. 2019 was rough, but I think I hear that. Like, but I yeah. hear that every year they say because well, you've got. I always feel like everyone. You it's easy to focus on that bit because I, I hear that every year. I mean, I 
I looked back on a you know, you know time hop. Yeah. Um, and and my my daughter was born three years ago, and I remember writing saying at New Year's saying everyone's been telling me that 2017 was the worst year ever, probably the best year ever for me yeah. because I had that positive enforcement there. So I, that was always going to be there. So I left a year with that. Whereas like you were saying, but other people yeah. leave the year with something different. So it's the, it's the, I think the it yin just and yang of it Yeah. And yeah, 2020 is a big number. I'm a number person. So oh, yeah. yeah. Um, having like a 2020 is like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, How did we get here? Yeah. Why are we flying cars? God. Um, but it's, it is hard. I think it's hard moving through moving through a year when everyone's we had so much happen oh yeah as and the, and the eco stuff is becoming a lot more prominent and i think one of the things that i've worked out with the research that i've been doing through coaching and all those kind of things is especially with sustainability that people get inspired for change mm-hmm. they then get empowered yeah but then they hit overwhelm so it's like it's an up and then they hit overwhelm because yeah. they actually realize that you can go to the Maldives and there is a rubbish island that is, God knows how big, yeah. piled high, destroying our planet in its own little ecosystem. And you go into overwhelm and then you just go into depression for it. And so you stop I because think... you go up and down and yeah. then you get re-inspired again. And it's great having all of these analogies for everything, but it really is true. I think people are like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I heard that someone said the baked beans don't get recycled unless you take the plastic or the paper off. So sod it. I'm just going to chuck it all in the bin. Yeah. Yeah. Why should I? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it's hard. I never, it's, knew, I never knew we'd talk so much about baked beans on well, the podcast. It's, a, it's an easy one to go to because I think people don't really think about it. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's tins, isn't it? So yeah. Yeah, everyone buys tins and yeah, they don't yeah. drink it that way. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's a major thing like with your sort of branding which obviously I followed and which you spoke about it um you mentioned about the transgender side of um your business Mm -hmm. how did you get into that because that's that's a very big sort of sort of um what's the word that's a big that's a big step to take to sort of go right I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on this it was completely unintentional (laughs) <laughs> they usually are to be fair like it just sort of happens um like, happens and things. it is very difficult because i'm the only person that does electrolysis here mm. so um and you have to a bit like with the advance so the reason why skin cancer is such a big thing is because i do mole reduction and skin tag removal and that kind of thing so you should technically um the requirements previously where you had to be qualified for 10 years okay. in electrolysis before you were allowed to do advance mm-hmm. and you also have to have had all your hep b vaccines so you have to be kind of at yeah. technical medical level really yeah, yeah. um then i had a client who came to me before her transition mm-hmm. um she'd been to other places and they'd kind of just really dismissed her yeah um and she came in as her previous self and showed me a photo and I just thought he was coming in for a gift voucher or something and <laughs> and I was on my own so yeah. I'm in a I was in a very small salon small place, yeah, yeah, yeah on Brimfield Road so I had two rooms so it was extremely private and it's something I've tried to keep here hmm. is that unless you knew where we were unless you knew about us you wouldn't necessarily yeah. know that this was a salon it's not like on a high street no big board, no big, big glass yeah. no um and basically showed me a photo and said this is who i'm going to be in six weeks time can you help me hmm. wow i was like uh yeah can you come back when i've got some time to talk to you yeah <laughs> um so she came back and it's all those things that you do so well one does instinctively without even realizing like when i went to book her in i said have you got have you got your new name or have you got have you got have you got yeah. your name yeah rather than let's refer to you as who you are right now let's yeah. let's work for it's who you are go- yeah it's who assume, are you gonna be yeah. um and that was kind of i think the the bond hmm. fixture yeah was and i don't know what made me say it it was just okay well Probably because you're just a good person it was just like just okay well who's who who are we booking that yeah who are we booking that in as and then kind of from there I spent Saturday nights, Monday, all day. We used to do four hours of individual hair removal. Yeah. 
Um, oh, God, yeah. We'd stop two and a half hours in for a tea break and then keep going. So, um, And it just ha- I then went on all the transgender training that you can for electrolysis, but I knew it all anyway. Yeah. Um, because electrolysis is electrolysis. It's slightly different when you're dealing with such a large area and there are still things that aren't known. Yeah. Um, like local. So local anesthetic, I'm not allowed to inject because okay. I'm not a medic. Mm. So um, also, from my understanding, when you inject into an area, you increase the water volume because yeah. you increase, increase the moisture, which means you, this game really techie, it means you increase the burning pattern. Okay. So you're more likely to get internal and surface burns, mm-hmm. um, but no one's done it, so no one knows. Oh right, okay. So um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's that kind. It's that realm when you start playing between the medical and the beauty, yeah. where we're not regulated as an industry, and we haven't got any acknowledgement within medical that of what we are and what we do. Mm. When you start playing in that field yeah. that is a blurred line it's very difficult because no one knows the answer no, I bet. it's a bit like with the cancer stuff so when you talk to insurances and everyone they say you're not allowed to touch someone who's had cancer for six months after treatment oh okay and you think but that person's going through hell and nothing we can do from my knowledge and from medics because i have contacted medics mm. about this there is nothing we can do to make it worse your body's pumping. It's because our theory, what we were always told, was if you massage, massage someone, you're going to move their cancer. So you're going to basically move it from their knee to their hip. Right. So your body's pumping itself around anyway. Your blood is pumping. Yep. God knows how many beats per minute around your body. So it's spreading itself, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it doesn't work like that. So it's yeah. I I'm very much on the if we can help you feel better. It's th- then, that, that's that's proper wellness as well. Yeah. You're looking after people's well-being. People. And, and the, uh, there was uh, there was a podcast I listened to of someone who was working in a spa thing. She'd set up an online company or something to do with her spa locations and that people were being turned around away because they had cancer. Oh, okay. But this girl runs a hotelier and I'm like, but you're not seeing it from where we're coming from as the people touching them, hmm. that we have our own responsibility that if something does go wrong... Um, that we're the ones liable, not the hotel. So it's 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 a very grey area. It's very difficult. Mm. It's um, but you've got to decide where where you put yourself. I've got someone on dialysis. It's my it's my call. Yeah. If I'd like to do a facial and do a scalp, and she comes out of hospital and then comes here and feels a million times better because she knows that. Actually, she's one got a safe sanctuary, which yeah. is where the name came from, because people refer to here as a sanctuary. Um, that they've got somewhere safe to go to, even when they feel awful, or when they're really struggling with depression, or when they're. I've, we've got people that don't leave the house other than to come here. Yeah, no, I, it's, I, I can understand it's, that. And you can literally pull your car right outside. You don't need to be seen by anyone. If you come in the evening, you can wear your pajamas, mm. and people do. And yeah. they just, they literally crawl <laughs> through the door and walk out like a different person yeah. and so i think they're the kind of things that remind me as to why i'm doing it it's like therapy yeah it is and, and i totally i totally appreciate it so um talk to me more about that the uh, sanctuary that you got the online so sanctuary. yeah so that launched on the 2nd of jan so 0201 2020 um you love your numbers do you love my numbers <laughs> um so that is basically, it came out of um, Emily dying. So she was our nanny, but she was basically my older sister. Mm -hmm. Um, She was part of our family from when she was 16 and when I was about eight. So uh, she was 37 and she died of a brain aneurysm. So she was dead within a week. She had a headache. So for me, it was a massive reality hit, As, as well as grief. Yeah, yeah. Pure grief and shock and just everything that comes in that whole plethora of emotions when you go through a a time like that um, was actually one that I had to go back to everything I knew, Mm -hmm. everything I knew about self-care to become human again, really. Um, I had to go back to washing off my face. I had to get into going through my day by mornings. I'd survived my morning. 
and I survived lunch. It got to 12 o'clock. I'd survived half a, half a day. I'd got through lunch. I'd got, I'd got through the afternoon by four o'clock and by nine o'clock I was finishing and I'd survived a whole day. And I worked by days like that, literally in dividing it into four of survival. Um, and I survived because I went home and I did all the things I do, my ritual practices and my gratitude and washing my face off when I double cleanse and all the things that I embody here that I preach to people every day. And it was very much, okay, well, here's your lesson in how to do it yourself. <laughs> you can talk to these people all day long about self-care until you actually, which I was, I was doing it. I was doing it every day anyway. I wasn't doing it necessarily as consciously because they're habits for me. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. So um, I wasn't doing them to the depth that I now do. Um, and basically I was... So if someone comes to me for a, in here, they normally have about an hour of my time. Mm -hmm. And there is so much more in my brain. And people really don't want to talk for a whole hour. They want to just be in here and chill and maybe talk for about five seconds and or 10 minutes. So this is and, probably nice. Sitting yeah. Here. <laughs> and, well, and have a bit of a natter and then kind of, and then they want to chill because that's why they're here. Yeah. Um, and actually what I was seeing more and more was the more that I was practicing all of these things, so much more was when I was hearing people who they were talking about going and doing a yoga session or I need to stretch more or I need to do this or I need to move more it's like well why do you feel that you've got to do everything yeah why can't you just do one thing and they're like what do you mean I'm like why can't you just for a whole week just wash your face every night mm. and it's like it was almost like revolution yeah but I'm supposed to be coloring in and doing yoga and doing gratitude <laughs> journals and going for a walk for 10 minutes a day and being grateful for five things and this and that and it was like well no how about you just do one thing how about instead of going to a yoga class, you find three moves that you really like that you repeat three times on a mat at home. It's true. And it was like, okay, well, how, how do I get all the information that I have in my brain out of my brain in case my brain decides to bleed? Because that was my, at that point, it was my reality. I yeah, could have yeah. a headache and I could be dead within a week and no one's going to know all of this incredible stuff that I do. <laughs> <laughs> From a non-ego point, it was purely like, how do I help, how can I help more people with let because I don't have any more time hmm. without running workshops and without doing all these things that I don't have time to do because I'm in here doing my job. It's yeah. a bit, I had a real go at a, one of my clients, a young girl who'd been digging at her face with one of these poor things, basically like a metal hair clip that right. people basically dig, dig their spots out of their face. And it was just, it was just before Christmas. And I just went nuts. I saw red and I was like, at what point do you think that watching someone on YouTube is going to get you better skin? I'm like, there are people like me who are stuck in rooms like this for 12 and a half hours a day trying to help people like you yeah. because I can't be on YouTube all the time because <laughs> I'm doing my job. <laughs> like, where's the logic? Come on. If you've got time to fanny about on YouTube all this time, yeah. no offense to anybody who's doing YouTube and doing really well at it, but like the people that are actually trying yeah, yeah. are the people that are... Are the people that are in the rooms trying to make the difference doing their jobs working 13 hour days trying to help people how did she react to that uh, she threw the thing away um, oh, well. <laughs> didn't throw it at you Just <laughs> right, thank god <laughs> um, i saw her mom the next week i was like i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry i said i don't know what happened i just kind of i think it's it's also i have i have weeks like that i have weeks where i hear the same thing yeah multiple times and i'm like okay Nada. No, I'm out. Mm. And then you get that one one person who just, <laughs> just hits hits the nail. <laughs> and it was but it was the kind of thing that actually in hindsight she wasn't gonna listen to anybody else. No. And she wasn't gonna listen to it if I'd come at it going, Do you know, I really think you should throw that in the bin because it's really not really good for your very for your face. Yeah, and it was you need to throw that in the bin or yeah. you need to send it, it to me. Yeah. Because because I couldn't also, because I've been working on her skin and I couldn't understand the scarring. Hmm. So I'm trying to work out why it's scarring in the particular shape and pattern yeah, that it yeah. is and at a deeper level and the colour's different. I'm like, what is going on here? This is new. 
I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's so red. Oh God. But it's, um, for, and because of that, and I think everything is online and there are so many people on YouTube that don't necessarily have any experience. No. They've gone and worked out how to make their face look beautiful by contouring at home. And they think that's great to talk to people about it, but they're not educating on the front and the back end of it. So what are you prepping your skin with before you literally cake it mm. in God knows what? Yeah, yeah. How are you protecting it from what you're putting on? And then what are you doing to get rid of it all? Yeah. And how are you how are you restoring it after you've done that? Because no one's talking about that. They're like, oh, look, watch how I can contour my face to look like for somebody famous. And it's, and and a lot of these people on online and that... Um, Got, they've got quite bad skin. And, and, and they're covering and, it on purpose. And, but they make a thing about yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Look how bad my skin is, but now look how good it is. And that must frustrate it's, you. <laughs> you must be like... <laughs> it's me sitting here tearing my hair out. Yeah. Yes, um, you've got bad skin. Yes, we understand that. Yeah, but also a bit like with the doctors, people go to the GP. I, I was put on inside a Facebook group by a PR agency mm. and I had to leave within 12 hours because... They were talking about Roaccutane like it was sweets. I'm like, mm. this is a medical grade drug. Oh yeah, but it, the the comment: if you go to the GP and say that you're depressed about your skin, they will give you Roaccutane. I'm like, this is something that can make you depressed, mm -hmm. infertile, that your skin will actually shed off, that your skin is so dry it physically cracks, and you're telling someone on Facebook that that's what they should do to their skin. No, and that's a dangerous thing. People will take. They will what listen they to, oh, yeah, Facebook, but I've seen this and I've seen that and blah, blah, blah. We, I've had it. I've had it with Sanctuary stuff where you've seen, oh, my God, someone's posted something about international VAT and you're like, oh, crap. Yeah. Okay, how do, how do I deal with that? What do I do? Send a screenshot of it to my accountant. Oh, what do we do? <laughs> just like, we're not there yet. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> um, because you, you dramatize everything. And so, basically, I wanted to create a platform hmm. that was... 100% self-care and it's done weekly so it's done very differently from other um platforms yeah um it's also for to my knowledge the only beauty one that exists created by a beauty therapist who specializes in skin and self-care okay i don't think any a lot of and this is why it took a while to do it because um a lot of salons have memberships mm -hmm. but they are memberships that are based very much around giving away free treatment so if you pay 120 pound yeah. a year you get one free treatment a month and we can't afford we can't do that mm. we, d we physically don't have the space like when i worked out i've got what 12 8 p.m appointments that means i've got availability for 12 people on a yeah. on an 8 p.m membership that's yeah. that you're not going to change the world like yeah. that but what and the way that it's released is weekly modules so every week you have a different exercise because for me with self-care, like what I was saying about cleansing, why not just try doing something for a week? Yeah. Try consciously breathing. So week one, module one is breathing. Um, then we've got cleansing, soothing, which is all about scalp pulling. So scalp release. Uh, gratitude with in terms of body and um, gratitude rituals with cuticles and stuff like that so I've integrated a lot of what I do work wise into all of the rituals um, and then we've got 12 modules of it so uh, god I have got it all on here um, <laughs> because I because I keep forgetting I get to like module 6 and then I keep forgetting so we've got clean, we've got Self Care 101, which is what we're in right now we've then got the senses mm -hmm. um, so the five senses we've then got rest so celebrating in the art of rest and that was something that was for me very much looking at it in all forms because I haven't picked up a business book for a year I haven't been part of a business group for a year I haven't been involved in anything for a whole year yeah. which in hindsight was a really interesting choice to make in January when everything then happened in April where I needed to rest because if I'd been part of something at that point I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. It would have been a waste of money for one. It would have been, I wouldn't have been in the right headspace. I would have been pushing myself, my body, my mind to a different level when it needed to be grieving. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just, in hindsight, it's incredible how these things turn out. Um, module four is all about science, so skin science, so about exfoliation and hydration and all those kind of things. Movement, um, understanding small moves. So small stretches, 
understanding what bits work like how to do them how to do shoulder rolls and all those kind of things yeah, just yeah, sim- yeah. it's really simple stuff um module six is pain acceptance and celebrating in kind of in the understanding of it for me one of the big things is understanding your body so i have where i had surgery six years ago on my back um pain has been a continuous part of my days okay. um and understanding pain and what it does mentally mm-hmm. to you as well as what it physically does yeah, from yeah. a debilitating point of view understanding how emotional but also physical pain can have such uh interesting effect psychologically because you become venomous mm. really spitefully so that you don't really realize until someone responds to you you snap and you don't like you don't even feel yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. snapping and then someone's like oh it's like oh god <laughs> sorry i must be in pain yeah yeah my body's <laughs> like, way of rea- reacting to yeah, you yeah and it's and it's really hard and that's i'm really really blessed with the girls that i've got here and especially mm. laura in particular because she can just look at me and be like have you taken any pills yeah you look like you're in pain or i'll i'll stand in a particular way or i'll pull my face in a particular way and like we have a relationship where we spend what over seven and a half hours a day in the same building we yeah. have probably more than a marriage when it comes <laughs> well we, a bit like with my pa so we spend more yeah. time communicating than she does with her husband so <laughs> there's more information about me in the front of her diary for 2020 yeah. than there is about her entire family put together oh wow well. um so <laughs> <laughs> it's madness but it's those things that are that do need to be re- kind of understood Mm. really um and also in celebrating the compassion for yourself with that because um a bit like people wear fitbits i've got an aura ring and it tracks my sleep my breathing my restfulness which is appalling so like last night for instance i didn't take any painkillers and this morning (laughs) i looked at it and i was like that's okay that's that's why my body hurts today um but also it's then a pre having the okay fine let's just take it a little bit easy today having the respect for your own body mm-hmm. of having we're so blessed to have all the apps and the technology that we do yeah, have yeah. is actually well why not use it mm. to be able to help with your own self-care and your own management of your own body and understanding because until you understand what's happening inside your body you can't start no uh, helping not even affecting it you can't start helping it um seven is environment so that's planet but also your environment at home okay so yeah, yeah. having sacred places within your house little mini sanctuaries mm-hmm. ritual places that you can go like your bathroom sink and making sure it's tight like says the girl who's not tidy um <laughs> Christian will be like, yeah, all right, whatever. Um, <laughs> the messiest girl in the world. Um, but creating environments like that that are sacred. Yeah, yeah. Um, then eight is rituals. So basically the science of habit forming. Mm-hmm. So why rituals are important. And the reason it's done so late in the day of that, so that's eight months in, is because every other module is a ritual. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Yeah. By the time you've got to ritual forming, you've already done eight months of rituals. So you realize how much you've already done and achieved by eight months in. Um, Desire, so that's module nine. So that's more intention setting, kind of visualizing, visualization, gratitude as well, but more kind of, okay, well, how, how do we change our wording a little bit to how how we want to live today yeah yeah rather than oh my god i've got to get up so early it's like oh great okay well i might be able to see a beautiful sunrise yeah appreciate yeah yeah um tends calm and breathe so just going back to the breathing exercises that we do in module one but just understanding a little bit more about calm about sitting in calm um 11's respect so in all forms that's people planet community everything and yeah. then 12 is an entire module all on gratitude wow okay so yeah it's been a hell of a lot of work <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of effort into that so uh, yeah so hopefully, hopefully it that goes well with you and people thank can get you. something from it yeah so. well it's the people that have signed up so far so we've had a, a lot of people already sign up um that's good have been 
I had one message saying I've cried reading it because wow. it's so beautiful. Okay. So that's the kind of that's the feedback I want. Yeah. So having having the kind of do you know what actually what the connection? Yeah. Yeah, and I've I've shown people modules that have been written mm -hmm. um, in here. Just I've given them the printout and yeah. just being like, can you just read through that and tell me what you think? And they come back being like, when does it launch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's. I've got really big aims for it, yeah. just because that's who I am as a person. No, it's um, really good. I was talking to someone about it, and she turned around and said, "You, you know, you could probably have this as a mental health mm. program." Yes. Um, which is like, oh my god. Who knows? Who knows? Who it's knows? Uh, yeah. I'd like. I'd really like. My aim is to get a thousand people through the course. Yeah. Um. Which is a big, big aim, but I, I think it's it's achievable, um, and I don't think that it's it's not unmanageable content. No, no, it's, it's not overwhelming for people. No, and I there are videos in it because I'm not a reader. Yeah, yeah. So I do read, but I read very selectively. So similar to me, yeah. It's I've done it, so there are snippet videos, so you yeah. can list, watch the videos, which are a minute long yeah. and get the gist of the entire thing Take you, it all in, yeah. yeah if you'd like to get more information then you read the content um there are going to be audios and stuff like that so people don't have to i'm not going to sit and read the whole thing yeah um i sound appalling when i read out loud so <laughs> it's, um, it turns out when i got recorded the other day it was not fun um completely monosyllabic it's amazing um i sound like siri uh, <laughs> maybe just get serious yeah maybe um <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of, it came from a place of needing more. Yeah, yeah. I can't help people other than the ones that come into my room. Hmm. And how can I help people that, like we've got clients that don't live around here anymore. Like how do I help, how do I continue to help them mm -hmm. by creating something that means they don't need to see me? Like, and, and that's the thing, like I have, that we have, the hardest thing moving in here and taking on staff was that there were people walking through the door that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. They weren't my clients. So there are people in this building that I don't know. They don't know me. They don't know who mm. I am, what I stand for, why yeah. I do what I do. Um, they just see the building and the brand, yeah. which is in incredible within its own right, but is also very hard when I know how much I have to give yeah. that those people don't, get a dose of me at the same time we had people saying about the fact that we were working 12 hour days at christmas oh my god you're gonna get so burnt out i was like well not if they practice what they've been taught yeah like the girls have all been given the self all the the self-care 101s mm. and they've all got the books it's it's not that and they em they embody it through osmosis yeah yeah a bit like water bottles we've all got water bottles it's all they're all small levels of osmosis that they absorb hmm. one would might hope um that help that help survive days like that because actually we're not doing it for we were doing it for a greater good we were doing it so we could be off for two weeks yeah like they had to think about 10 nearly 10 days off for christmas like they're not working 12 hour days just because we're trying to make more money as a company no, exactly. we're doing it to try and make sure that they can have a decent chunk of time off yeah, where we're all away that they're not having to pay to go on holiday that hmm. there's a lot of people didn't even get that time off. Actually. exactly they get about three days four days and if that too yeah. normally so, so yeah it was um yeah we try i try yeah I try no, to be as human as possible no, you do when really, it comes you do to really well it comes so. across really well i mean Thank it, you. It, it sounds brilliant and um all right, so to, to, to end the podcast, I always sort of ask this one question. How do you maintain your own happiness? I found that question really hard. It's not supposed to be an easy question. If I, an easy I question. was like, I was, when I read it, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> because I was, I was really shocked that that was, a, like, not in, a, not in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> because I, I, I said to my mom last night, I was like, how do I find happiness? <laughs> I rang her and she was like, oh God. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I know. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love it's, that I've stumped you. you. You've just done a whole hour. I know, a whole coming. hour of like talking absolute gibberish. <laughs> um, and yet that one question gets me. Um, 
what I came up with. Okay. There was no right or wrong. You know that. No, so um, just... but I struggled with it because I thought it was a very broad mm-hmm. statement. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe that happiness can be achieved as a goal. Okay. Um, I like that. Yeah. That's a very, that's a, that's a very so, good answer. Um, I like where this is going. I like, I like where this is going. Because obviously, uh, look, the, the backing of the whole question become is um, I spoke to a therapist friend of mine about it and I kind of said it to them. And the glint in her eye was very like, that's a very open question. And you are going to get a lot of different answers to this. And you're going to get a lot of different attitudes towards it. And I was like, well, that's, that's good, isn't it? That's yeah, what, it's a uh, bit like when people say, do you believe in luck? Well, yeah, exactly. It's, it's very, uh, and I do like open questions sometimes. Um, so no, so <coughs> it was it was literally we were my partner and I were having a question a conversation about it when you first sent over that because I think we were, it was just about I was just about to go away, yes, wasn't you I? Were, yeah, yeah. And I was like, can you please send me these questions? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're about to leave the country, um, and I really don't want to have to be checking anything. And I opened it and I was like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like delete uh-huh. delete yeah, that's it <laughs> and i said to him i was like i don't believe in happiness like that mm. and he went well that's what you say then yeah i was like well and well you're probably not gonna like edit this bit out no 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 she no she refused to answer no the and i am very happy to answer <laughs> the question um it's more that i i think i think that and it's very cliche that happiness is a journey not a destination mm. um but i believe that that comes in moments yeah okay it's, I, like I think you get moments of happiness, you get moments of joy. I think you can strive for it, but I also think that it's a slightly unachievable goal mm-hmm. to to want. It's a bit like when people do their intention setting for the next year. I want to be happy. It's like, well, that's not going to happen, is it? Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> Just you can try really hard, but it's not. It's, it's a little bit, and it's it's a bit like for me. It was my intentions were to be humble. Okay. To come at this year with grace. Hmm. Not because I'm hoping that if I'm more humble, well, not that I, ch- um, I would hope that I am humble <laughs> all the time anyway. <laughs> um, but just because I really would like to go up for more awards and everything yeah. this year, because last year we were on such a standstill that when, and also with happiness comes when you strive so hard for something that you pin your happiness on. Hmm. like an award yeah and you don't win it it is heartbreaking i've sat there and cried which is insane and it's insane to say out loud but i sat in a room of 250 salons i was put in the wrong category because i was told that we were large salon not small i was told that we were going to be transferred into a different category if the judges believed we were in the wrong category Mm -hmm. which i was only told afterwards we were being judged by competitive area like competitive regional oh, okay. entrance um and i was the only one that is eco and the woman stood there on stage and said this year has been about sustainability <laughs> and about helping the planet and i'm like yes <laughs> awesome oh, we've won <laughs> and then we didn't and it was such <laughs> <laughs> which i know like saying it out loud it's like oh my god it's such a ridiculous story but it's it really was and i and i was so heartbroken because i thought i haven't done this hmm. for pr yeah i've done this because of my belief in the planet and yet you stand there on stage and you nominate someone that's got what because they've got a yoga studio okay <laughs> and they provide lunch for people well where's that sustainability hmm. and my team were amazing <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sitting there howling yeah. and the first thing Rachel, my PA says is they're just not ready for you. No. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. They're not ready for what you have. They're not ready to see you. Hmm. And that's unbelievably educated oh, yeah. and inspiring. But it was, and it was, it was a moment that I've had to relive quite a few times because I'm like, okay, I just have to remember that. Yeah. That it's not ready. It's a bit like the sanctuary. We'll get we will get so many people in industry be like, okay, yeah, whatever. Mm. It's like, but it's not for you. Yeah. I'm not here to teach you self care. I'm here to teach the people that don't know and that can't can't find it themselves. And I think 
with happiness, you have to strive for calm and finding happiness in small things, in moments That's it. of of joy, yeah. of when the sun shines through the room and when you watch the sunset and when it rains and the it, smell when it rains and happiness from from moments with your partner and the, like being able to be in the car yesterday with Harry Potter on. <laughs> yeah, it's the little, it's the little eating thing. time bars it's like and it's such a stupid thing but it's like but that and then he's dropped it on his hands and then his hands hurt and then the happiness bubble's gone um <laughs> but do you see what i mean it's not yeah. you can't i don't believe that it's sustainable to keep happiness at the forefront it's like um you ever see the movie inside out no. The Pixar movie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. And One with all the different heads. That's it. All the yeah. different like, emotions and that. And that, the, for, for a, in quote, kids movie. Oh, it's a fantastic it's movie. Deep. And um, the kind of happiness question, I always sort of look at that film because you've got joy, which is the happy emotion. You've got sadness. And they're always trying to shut sadness up and push sadness to the side. And oh, shut up sadness. Yeah. It's all about joy, wanting to be at the front. And then they realise at the end, no, you no, can't be have... functioning properly with just joy no. with just happiness so it's having that balance of it is and i think everything. because because you can have in a weird way sadness in life can lead to happiness because it can lead to a sanctuary yeah so it's that kind of idea isn't it so that's kind of like what when when i ask the question to main, maintaining your happiness it's just remembering that like you said the little things yeah i think the moments i think if you'd asked me that in april you might be more positive. No, I would have told or... you that happiness doesn't exist. Oh no, because of yeah, what happened. But yeah, say, say I, I asked you in last January, then do you think it might? You still might have been. I would. I would. I would always say it comes in moments. Yeah. Because last January I'd had a really rough Christmas, and I, I believe happiness definitely comes in moments. It's... Definitely. Yeah, I wouldn't. <sighs> yeah. I think also I think it depends on your life situation. Like I'm, I was thinking about last Christmas. Like so, last Christmas I was away diving, mm. um, and on Christmas Day I have an anaphylactic shellfish allergy, which means within about three and a half minutes of putting anything that has a shell like a prawn in my mouth, I will be dead. So when people talk about happiness with food, mm. I have no happiness with food. At all, because it is a life-threatening... Fear, yeah. yeah. it's a real problem. Um, so, like, <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't a Christmas Day. It wasn't a happy Christmas Day, because it was like, oh, my God, they've all just cooked lobsters in that kitchen. Yeah. And they probably don't really understand about cross-contamination, and can I risk putting any of this in my mouth when I'm on a boat in the middle of nowhere, yeah. at least five and a half hours away from help, yeah, yeah. without any member of my family, with a boat full of people that don't speak English? There's no <laughs> happiness there. No, <laughs> Even if you're in a boat in the middle of the Maldives, that yeah. moment of like, I can't. No, yeah, this yeah. is you're on. You're on life support. You're on. You're on critical kind of awareness so it's yeah and then the next morning you're in the ocean watching manta rays and yeah you're back in i think the one moment i've had underwater was in the galapagos with dolphins and the whole i'd never dived with dolphins before and the whole ocean was full oh wow and it was i i've got it on i've got it on instagram i've got it on the, i've had it on gopro which is just mind blowing because yeah. it wasn't my GoPro. It was the first time I took someone's GoPro down because yeah. I don't have a camera. So, um, and we caught the whole thing, and it was like I got up and I was like, I could die now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm out. Yeah, I'm gonna go and eat that porn plate. <laughs> <like, okay. laughs> because it was the most humbling, yeah, and mind blowing thing I'd ever seen and heard because it was just the sound. And then you get up and everyone's like, Oh my god, did you see the whale shark as well? And you're like. No, we just <laughs> yeah. no, we just had a, we just had a whole ocean full of dolphins. Yeah. So is that not enough? Yeah. Um, just let me have this moment. Yeah. So no, I think I think it comes in moments. I like that. That's that's a great answer. Like, there's no right or wrong answer. And I do like the reaction I get. I ask I ask people that I know, not even in the podcast, I just to ask them, and they sometimes blankly look at me. Oh. And and what's funny is they they sometimes look at me, and sometimes I do it whenever they drink, and oh, whenever they drink. Oh, it's amazing. They find happiness everywhere. You ask them when they're sober the next day. No, nah, you're right. 
Yeah, it's it's a bit like luck. Luck's luck's normally a question people ask. Do you believe Do you believe in luck? Do you believe you're lucky? I'm like, no. I believe luck comes from extremely hard work and the power and determination of wanting. I yeah, I've been lucky, but would I say I'm I'm privileged? I've been privileged. Mm. I've been extremely privileged with the family situation that I've got. Yeah. Just co- is coincidence. Um, am I lucky that I put my hand up in a room? No. That's confidence. Yeah. How do you get confidence? You get confidence from self compassion, self assurance, mm-hmm. self knowledge, and knowing. Yeah. By wanting to improve yourself as a person, I've I've been in a mastermind with a. Oh God, there were God knows how many of us in the room, and this guy, who was teaching us, said about P and L. What? And I was like P and L. Like I was like, that sounds like a cruise ship. I'm like, what is that? And. I put my hand up and I was like, sorry. He was like, profit and loss. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> profit but, and loss. Yeah. And I was like, why don't you just say that? And then, and everyone's looking at me like, how do you not know that? Yeah. And then we got to lunch and I, I'd kind of curled up into this little shriveled yeah. thing at the back of the room all morning. And one of the ladies flagged me on it and went, why, why have you kind of shriveled and i'm like well because i look made uh, i felt like i looked like an idiot and they're like so, and then five people around me went i didn't have a clue what he was talking about <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> they're like nah 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 she's like i'm really glad you asked i'm yeah, like yeah, great yeah. so i'm the one that gets yeah. to look like a wally That's it. It's what was but on. you've got to but if you want to know the answer you've got to ask the question that's it so Right. There you go. That's your answer to happiness. There you go. I like it. No, I like it. I'm gonna, when you listen back, I think you'll you'll nod and agree and be like, yeah, exactly. So yeah. So thanks a lot. Thank thanks you a, very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot That's for right. coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. And uh, I hope everything in your future is uh, a moment crossed. has moments of happiness. In it. Yeah. So do I. Very much so.